Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.4 Beta 5 has been out for the past few days or so and I've been using it full time on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. I also have it on my iPad Pro and wanted to share my overall experience and your experience based on the YouTube community poll. Now this was a bit of a surprise as many of us expected a release candidate or RC version and a final release next week, but that may have changed since Apple announced a new event in March and we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Now I've compiled a list based off the YouTube community poll where there's 11,000 votes and 166 comments. I've read all of those comments to get the best understanding of what iOS 15.4 is like. And you may have already heard the geese in the background, so if it's a bit noisy, I apologize, but it's also a little windy and there's planes going overhead, so you may hear all of those things in this video. But based off of the 166 comments and my experience, I've compiled a list giving you the best understanding of what it's like to use this overall. Now, the first thing is there's a few different changes or features I didn't mention in the initial what's new video of beta five. However, there's very few based on the code. Now, the first thing was sent in by Noah. So I have a screenshot here. And after he installed beta five, you'll see it says iPhone will now unlock with watch when your face is covered or for Siri requests. So this was a new notification I hadn't seen before. Again, thanks to Noah for sending that in. There's also a new notification in notes for some people the first time they open it. I did not see this on any of my devices. I actually saw the Apple wallet notification with the new sort of icon for notes, but that's something some people may see and some may not. Additionally, there's another icon that's been updated according to Steve Mosier in the code. You can see here, this is for Apple Compass. I wasn't able to find this exact sort of update to the logo or icons. And if you found this, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, but I wasn't able to see this at all. Also, someone named Jay Turner sent in a message saying that when they updated, music was playing and it actually gave them a message that they couldn't install this with the music playing. They hadn't seen that before. I haven't seen that. So maybe there's some new notifications all around the OS based on when you're installing an update and more. Now, the overall experience is quite good. I've been using it, like I said, on my 13 Pro Max. I personally have not had a single freeze, lockup, crash, or anything else. Now, some people do have app crashes and lockups, but for the most part, it seems to be very stable. In the comments, there were only a couple people that mentioned lockups at all. And you can see ProMotion is nice and smooth, so I really haven't had any issues with that. And once this update is out, we'll see updates to third-party apps where it's easier for them to integrate ProMotion into their app. Apple allows it already, but they have to implement it on the developer side. So hopefully we'll see more and more apps do that. But performance overall seems to be great. Also, Face ID with a mask is more responsive as well. So if you're unlocking your phone with a mask, it seems like it's a little bit better this time around and is working more like you would expect as opposed to really slow or sometimes glitchy or buggy. Most people are reporting that. Also, I haven't had any crashes or reboots since beta four, like I said, so pretty stable overall. Some people have experienced odd lag and slowdown, but in general, it seems to be pretty good. Cellular connectivity is okay for me. It's not phenomenal. It seems hit or miss when it's switching between different cell towers. Typically, you'll see here I'm on 5G UC, and when it switches, sometimes it sort of hiccups. Now it just switched to LTE, so I might lose data for a moment, and then it will work again. So sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't, and it's very hit or miss. Quite a few people report worse connectivity with beta five, despite there being no modem updates. So they could have changed something in the software to affect that as well, but I would expect them to update that before the final release. And of course we need to leave feedback to make sure they're aware of that. Wi-Fi seems better as well. In fact, not a single comment reported Wi-Fi creating an issue this time around where there were a few before. And also Bluetooth is mostly good, but causing issues for a few different people. Now I personally haven't had that. It seems to connect. Okay. Let's just do a quick connection test here and see what happens it's taking quite a while maybe i don't have battery life yeah i do there we go and so it opens but it took two tries so that's the first time i've seen that but i typically use airpods max most of the time and those seem to connect right away maybe it's the type of airpods and maybe even the airpods need an update at this point but in general it seems to be pretty reliable at least for me sometimes for people with Bluetooth in their car, it sometimes disconnects. So that could be an issue between whatever Apple changed. And then of course the manufacturer of the car as well. There's some odd bugs with Bluetooth overall for some people, but it's really hit or miss and depends on the person and device. Now, as far as battery life, it's been really hit or miss for me. If we go to battery, we'll go to battery here, go to battery health. You'll see I'm at 100% still on my 13 pro max. And if we go to the last 10 days, 
you can see depending on the day it varies greatly. Yesterday I had 3 hours and 28 minutes of screen on time, 5 hours and 35 minutes of screen off time. Today, well, it's only been a little bit, but I had an hour and 58 minutes of screen on time, 4 hours and 7 minutes of screen off time. Again, like I've said before, it's odd that I'm having screen off time as I'm not using it with the screen off. So you can see home and lock screen is using the most and it keeps turning on the lock screen even when it's in sleep mode or do not disturb for some. And sometimes it doesn't turn off. Someone reported this in the comments as well. So when they were on a MagSafe charger, sometimes that would happen. So it seems to be an odd bug for some. But battery life is getting me through a day I did notice it's a little bit lower than 50% when I go to bed and it's typically above 50% so I'm thinking it will improve with the final version but at this point it's still a little hit or miss for me. Now, Abishek sent in his battery life as well, so I could share that. This is on an 11 Pro Max, and you can see here, it's in dark mode and it's very bright out, so hopefully you can see this, but four hours and 10 minutes of screen on time, 16 minutes of screen off time, and he used about 45% of his battery life again yesterday or the day before, three hours and four minutes of screen on time, 52 minutes of screen off time, and again, 40 percent or so of his battery. Now one good thing is battery life on my iPad seems to be better at least since yesterday. So this is a new development for me. Let me share that with you. Now the experience on the iPad is quite good like I've mentioned in the past but one thing I wanted to know is see we're at 92 percent battery life. This is quite good since I charged it last night, took it off the charger at 12 22 a.m. and when I woke up this morning it was at 100 percent. I actually haven't seen it use 0% of the battery overnight in a very long time. So hopefully today is much better as far as battery. You'll see I've only used it 21 minutes, but it's still calculating some odd screen off time. But either way, it seems to be a huge improvement. But again, Find My is using a lot of background activity, as is Mail for some reason. So again, there's still some odd issues here and there. Hopefully it's improved with the final version. Now as far as things they've actually fixed in this update, well, it looks like the storage bug has been fixed. Multiple people have confirmed. It seems like beta 3 it got better, beta 4 fixed most of it, and now it's completely fixed for all people. That's what people are t reporting and telling me, so let's load it here. Again, it does take a little bit, but that was pretty quick. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, it even loaded system data pretty quickly. So it seems to be loading like you would expect, and the same on all the devices. Now that pink display issue seems to be resolved as well, although I did have one person comment saying that in Facebook it was causing that when they were using 360 video. However, that might be app specific. So Apple has not said they fixed it, but I haven't had a single report other than within Facebook that this is a problem anymore, where the phone turns pink or purple and then completely re reboots and comes back to normal. Also, the repeating voiceover bug is fixed. So when you're using Siri, if you had voiceover turned on in accessibility, sometimes you would use Siri and it would repeat itself. That has been resolved in this update. So it looks like they fixed a few things. They didn't mention that officially, but it's definitely working like it should again. Now, as far as remaining bugs, there are a few of them. Only a couple people were saying that they had freezing and lockup, like I mentioned earlier. So a reboot seems to fix that. One issue I've seen repeatedly is when you're sending music to a HomePod, it seems to be a problem. So maybe you're sending to a HomePod. I don't have one nearby, obviously, because I'm outside. Oftentimes it will either cut out and not work properly, it will play and then stop, or it just won't work at all. This seems to be an ongoing issue and sometimes the logo doesn't show up properly either. I've had a couple people report this to me and it seems to be an ongoing issue. Also, people still report that music bug is there. So when you're playing music being streamed, sometimes it causes an issue where it uses excessive battery life. Apple hasn't said that they've fixed it. Hopefully they do with the final notes when this comes out to the public. Also, CarPlay continues to have issues when connected to your vehicle. I don't know if this is something they're going to be able to fix without your car stereo being updated. Hopefully that's not the case, but this seems to be an ongoing issue since earlier versions of iOS 15. So if you're using CarPlay, it seems to be an issue, and it could go along with that Bluetooth issue where people have it disconnect. So maybe there's something related there, but either way, wireless or non-wireless or wired CarPlay seems to be having that issue. Performance is pretty good overall, and I ran benchmarks on them so I could share those after it of running for a few days just to see if it would improve. So if we go to Geekbench 5, you'll see on my 13 Pro Max, I have 1,731 for single core, 4,718 for multi-core. That's a little bit of an improvement depending on the day. So you can see March and then February 28th with the previous beta. So it's a little bit higher for single core, but a little bit lower for multi-core depending on which time you ran it. However, based off of a few days ago when I ran this initially, it's actually a little bit improved for multi-core. So as long as 
as we're within 100 varying back and forth, it should be just fine. There shouldn't be any issues there. Let me share with you the iPhone 10 and iPhone 11 as well. So on the iPhone 11 and iPhone 10, you can see it here on the iPhone 11. We have 1313 for single core on the iPhone 10. We have 901 for multi core on the iPhone 11. We have 2788. On the iPhone 10, we have 2,130. Again, this is within 100 of what we ran before, so it seems to be performing as you would expect. These can vary greatly, just running them back to back even, or waiting a few minutes and running it again. Now, as far as when to expect iOS 15.4 RC or release candidate, I thought it would be this past week based off of maybe them releasing the final version after the Apple event that was expected. However, Apple did release the Apple event invites and it's due for March 8th. I mentioned this in a separate video with everything to expect. So if you're curious about that, you can check it out. Otherwise, if you want to be surprised, you can wait until Tuesday, March 8th at 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern. So we should see an update then and I would expect the release candidate after that event. So typically Apple will release the release candidate after that with the final version coming later in the week. And then we should see some product pre-orders probably on the 11th with them releasing around the 18th or so. That's typically what Apple does. So we should see something along those lines as well as new cases for the iPhone as well. Some of the case colors and things for spring should be coming out very, very soon. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 15.4 beta five, well, if you're a beta tester, you probably already have and you definitely want to as a beta tester to make sure that those bugs that you were having are resolved and that your code if you're creating an app is compatible however if you're having issues again make sure to report that in feedback as apple may even respond to you and work with you sometimes to get that resolved i've seen many people report that to me where apple has reached out and sort of worked through a problem with them from time to time or gotten more diagnostic data However, if you're not a beta tester and you want to try this out to resolve a problem, I typically recommend holding off. But if you want to try it out, try the new feature with Face ID, with a mask, things like that, you definitely could try it. But keep in mind that's on iPhone 12 and newer, and I don't think Apple's going to be releasing it to older devices due to the neural engine. However, they haven't said that officially, so maybe we'll see a surprise once they release it to the public. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of the comments. So. At the time of this video, let me refresh here. We have 11,000 votes or so, and 22% of you are on iOS 15.4 beta 5, 67% of you are on iOS 15.3.1 or older, 2% are on 14.8.1 or older, 1% are on iOS 13.7 or older, and 8% of you are using Android. Now let's take a look at some of the comments. Continuing from the theme from the past couple of weeks, I thought I'd continue to read your comments in person. And thankfully, again, it's a nice day outside, so I'm outside. Now, the first one is from It's Kelvin. iOS 15.4 beta 5 on an iPhone 12. Performance is great and battery life is great. The only problem I had was the system data was taking 256 gigabytes. Then I restored my phone from a backup, then the bug went away, and now everything is fine. Typically when this happens, it will clear itself up on its own, but it can take a few days. So when you install an update, say it's five gigabytes or so, oftentimes after it's installed, it's indexed everything, it will delete that install files because it just doesn't need it anymore. So typically you'll see your storage recovered back to what you had before or very similar. Now, of course, this can be a bug and sometimes you'll need to restore from a backup to fix it. But most of the time that happens, especially when the public versions come out. Jeremy DeBose said beta five on 13 pro max and 2018 iPad pro. It has felt ready since the last beta battery life is even closer to 15.2 levels, most stable version of iOS 15 so far. And I think most people would agree with you. So I think a lot of people will be pretty happy once this update is out and released to the public. Eli Grenier says my iPhone 13 pro max is using iOS 15.4 beta five. And I've noticed that my cellular connection is horrible. Also, when connected to wireless CarPlay, Apple Music will freeze or switch from stereo to speakers. Andy Romero says, iPhone 13 Pro, iOS 15.4 Beta 5, I've been experiencing severe overheating and lagging responsiveness. The apps start to slow down and the screen automatically dims. The apps happen to crash also. Now, I saw someone else comment that they actually don't have any overheating issues or anything like that anymore. I'm curious what the environment is like where you are. If it's really hot out and you have a case on, that definitely can cause that issue, especially on a 12 Pro, but usually not the 13 Pro. So maybe that's the issue. It's hard to say, but maybe if it's in an enclosed case, you may want to remove that and see if that improves it. Either way, I would probably at least reboot it and see if that resolves the issue. Mohammed Amin said, I'm on beta five on my iPhone 13 Pro, and this update is way better. I'm getting good battery health, no bugs at all, and even Face ID with a mask is a little faster and responsive.
Jesse Han says Beta 5 feels smooth and fast as always, and there's a significant improvement in battery life on my 13 Mini. Name said iPad OS 15.4 Beta 5 has been very good on my 2011 11 inch iPad Pro. Performance is great, as always, and battery life seems to be quite improved. The voiceover bug with Siri has been fixed in this beta, and I haven't seen any other bugs so far. So I think that 15.4 is pretty close to being ready for the public. Matt Mills said, 12 Pro Max, I lost 5 gigs going from 15.3.1 to the beta. My focus mode slash alarm feature turned off by itself the night before. If I didn't have my main alarm up, I'd be late for work. Battery seems decent, not much worse than 15.3.1. Messages reply button only worked if I pressed it more than once. Other than that, everything seems good. And that's typically why I warn people about using betas. Sometimes alarms don't work, although thankfully I haven't had that, that problem, but maybe have a second device nearby or an alarm clock or something just in case. When you're testing betas, those things can happen. So that's something I typically warn people. If you have critical things, unless you're a developer and you need to test those, I tend to recommend a secondary device just in case. Apple Tech said I'm on iOS 15.4 Beta 5 and so far Bluetooth seems to be much better for me where it doesn't drop and stop playing in my car. Battery seems to be getting much better. I'm using a 12 Pro Max. I love all your videos by the way and hope you're having a wonderful day. And thank you for the compliment, and I hope everyone here is having a wonderful day, wherever you are. I typically comment that on a different video or on Twitter, and sincerely, I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Milan Subit said, I'm on iOS 15.4 Beta 5 on my iPhone 12, and this is the first time I use a beta software. Luckily, I haven't experienced any issues or bugs. Face ID with a mask is amazing. Performance and battery life are great, so I'm really happy I tried it out. And again, like I said, sometimes people have very different results, although 15.4 definitely seems better. Timothy Fang says, I still have the music bug where it will skip tracks in my car using Bluetooth. So again, very mixed experiences based on what car you have, what device you have, Bluetooth and things like that. So it does look to be getting much better and iOS 15.4 is very close to a final release. So that's everything in 15.4. Maybe we'll see a few refinements with the RC. Maybe we'll know exactly what bugs they've fixed and more, but we should know that within the next few days. Let me know what you're looking most forward to at that upcoming Apple event and what would you like to see in iOS 16? Because we should see that in June at WWDC. Typically those invites go out in March, so we should see something about that soon and Apple's already been working on it, and maybe we'll see more about that very, very soon. I can't wait to see what Apple does, and hopefully we get a redesign and more. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.